Welcome back, everybody. Episode seven of season three. See, I remember this time. Impressed. Yeah. Danny, good job, buddy. Thanks. I appreciate that. Um, episode seven. We got another another Duxbury guest, uh, Josh Bourbon. Say hello, Josh. Hello, everybody. Josh. Uh, Josh has been living in Duxbury for how long, buddy? Uh, about seven or eight years. Seven or eight years, and uh, we played some men's league hockey together, and uh, we'll get into all that, get into his background, but uh, before we do that, we got to cover some uh, some topics here. So I went to Nashville over the weekend. Yeah, you Woo! did. Yeah. Have you been to Nashville, Josh? I have not. Uh, Root Bear, have you been to Nashville? A couple times. Yeah. Yeah. Bachelorette parties. Yeah, there was a lot of that going on. A lot yeah. of women wearing the same shirts. Yeah. Getting loose. Loose. Yeah. Lucy yeah, Goosey. Yeah, and wild child down there. I mean, it was not a place for children. No. Broadway. Yeah, Broadway was not a place for children. Like New Orleans style? Um, like not, Mardi Gras? Not as grimy, but... No, very clean. Yeah. Uh, Very commercialized. Like Jason Aldean has a bar. Miranda Kid Lambert. Rock. Kid Rock. Um, They all had bars. And they were like four levels tall. And every single level had a different band going... Lots of music. Uh, we line danced one night, um, but we flew Southwest. Do you ever fly Southwest? Oh, not at all. Oh, baby. Baby. So someone was like, oh, you're flying Southwest. It's like, you know, you feel like herding cattle. I'm like, well, how could it be that? I mean, everyone. What seat number did you have? Well, Do you remember? I didn't. So here's the thing. You don't get a seat. Yeah. Just line up. You line it. up. Yeah. So I didn't know that. And the earlier you log in or, or check in, yeah. the better you're lot in life is so to speak as they heard the cattle in so like i was c57 which was like the last one to get on the plane hank and i because i didn't check in until i got to the airport because that's what you normally do back you know i don't know that's how you, i flew right i didn't online check in so that was on the way down it was fine everybody's getting on the plane like i sat, sat by myself hank sat with with some of his buddies they they manipulated the system as 12 year old 13 year olds tend to do um but on the way home, I checked in early, uh, you know, 24 hours before, and I got a B, which I thought was pretty good. And then I upgraded for an extra 100 bucks to A. So I was like A11 or something. So I was like one of the first ones to get on the plane. I was all excited. Got to like the fifth row. There was an aisle seat available. I jumped in the aisle seat and wait and wait and wait. A couple, a couple sits down next to me and... The woman just wouldn't stop talking to me. So she's talking and she's asking questions, right? And I'm giving my one word answer. I kind of like positioned my body like away from her. You know what I mean? Because yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to talk to her. She's like, oh, are you here with a hockey team? Yeah. Oh, does everybody have to pay? How much was it? What was the flight? Where'd you go? Where'd you stay? Like rapid questions. So after like the 30th question, I just got up out of the chair and went to the back of the plane. Ended up sitting right next to all the other people that didn't upgrade. I <laughs> <laughs> get your hundred bucks back. <laughs> I, so Hank had already gone to the back of the plane because he wanted to sit with his buddies. So I had this prime seat, like seat four, row four aisle, and this woman just completely destroyed it for me. That'll ruin it. Yeah. That's a nightmare. Because I knew she was going to talk to me the whole time. Mm -hmm. She was not taking any hints. Mm -hmm. So like, what are the hints? If you're, t if you're, if you're talking, one word answers, that's a hint, right? Yeah. For socially aware people. Yeah. And turning your body's a that's huge a, hint. That, <laughs> that's yeah. a big one. Not asking questions back. I've been thinking about it. Not asking a question back. Right, that's a hint. I'm not engaging you in anything reason why you were down in Nashville. I don't care. She was like, when did you get there? How did you fly? What time was your flight? Did you fly Southwest? Did what? Were you A? Were you B? What were you the last time? Who are you flying with? The poor husband. I know. Mm. Oh, he was like, Yes. <laughs> I don't have to listen Your to this turn. woman. <laughs> so I felt like I gave her enough social clues. And then I just got up and <laughs> walked away in the middle of the conversation. Some people just don't get it. Yeah. Should, should put some headphones in. Mid, mm. mid conversation. So, yeah. That was my other move. But then my buddy texted me. And he's like, hey, we got an extra seat back here in the same row. So I went back there and hung out and had a beer and relaxed. So, um, so we talked about on the last show about teachers and the, remember he was, what was he talking about, Keith? Cam was talking about having the same teacher as his mother. Yes. Yeah. So I've thought about that and it turns out 
my kids have the same have teachers that I went to school with. That makes sense. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. I just thought that was interesting. No, I'm glad you brought it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rando, the Spanish teacher at there, is uh teaching Rose right now. So um so I thought that was interesting. You didn't, you no, didn't Rando I feel like that's Rando. Rando. Ran- Mr. Rando? Mr. Rando. <laughs> Yeah, he went to school with me. Mr. Rando. What's that? That's, like, a That's like who you hooked up with last week. <laughs> <laughs> not true, John. Johnny Cops, I'm just kidding. He was not a random guy at all. She's known him for a while. Right. <laughs> um, oh, man. Did, so we were talking last week about working as a kid, right? And you had a job. Did you have a job as a kid? I did. Yeah? I did. First job, I was 14 years old. Okay. So I, have a, I had a little bit of an issue today because... My Rose and Hank both have jobs. Okay, they time keep at the bog. And I've been tasked with picking out the times that they work. And I just pick the same times every week. And I get in trouble because I don't check with what's going on. And then they want me to change the times. And I feel like that's sending the wrong message to my kids. Well, let me ask you, are you are you picking those times up based around your schedule and driving them to where they have to be. No, I'm picking them because Saturday and Sunday mornings. Okay. I figured that's that's they can get up, go time keep two games, and then there's a, there's an afternoon slot that they can work too. So it's availability at the rink. Like they only have six or eight hours that are available, um, and I'm picking them. But like I pick two weeks, two hours for Hank. I look at their hockey schedule, obviously because that's a prior commitment, right? So I look at their hockey schedule, and then I pick games around that. And Rose has cheerleading from four to eight, and she just got so. Side note: she just uh, got promoted because someone got injured, so she got promoted. So she's on like this level six team, which is she's not supposed to be this because she's she's too young, but she's really good at what she does. So, but she was kind of like on the sidelines. She's like riding the pine a little bit, but someone just quit. They didn't get hurt. They quit. And so she slid. She slid she's into in. like oh, yeah, that's huge. Yeah. yeah. So she's all fired up. That's what awesome. was that flip called that you were sending me the other scorpion. day? Scorpion. That's called a scorpion. That's called a scorpion. Oh, those that's, are That's crazy. pretty impressive. Yeah, so she can do a scorpion now. It's like your <laughs> foot goes on your head, right? That's Backwards. a that's a that's a hold. So you're thinking of a ballet scorpion hold, which I think is you're standing tall and you pull your foot up and hold it behind your head. This is a backward flip yeah, where I, she kind of like goes side like a it's like a backward corkscrew. Like a reverse it's crazy. I'll send you the video. We can put it on the on the podcast. Okay. It's insane. It is pretty cool. Um, and she does it. It's a. I think it's actually called a standing scorpion. I think is what it's called. Yeah, she wasn't moving. Um, but but, regardless, so I got Hank two hours, f- to work, and he can't work him because he's going out with his grandmother, <laughs> and I don't know how I feel about that. He's going shopping with his grandmother for her birthday. Early in the morning. Well, no, these games were the afternoon games, so oh. it's like a one, one and a two. Call it. I, How do you feel I, about that, Josh? I would stick with the work. Yeah, that. that no, I disagree. How much more time does Grandma have on? Because it's Earth? Grandma, yeah. Maybe, what five? Well, I'm not years? saying you don't go. I'm just saying you. Hey, Grandma, I have to work. I get out of work at three. Derby Street's open till ten. Instead of going during the day, we go at night. Well, the afternoon. Well, she might have b- bingo or something. She can't drive well, at night, though. That's yeah, the other right, issue. Yeah. And it's her birthday? His. Oh. It's his birthday. So you're making him work on his birthday? Well, his birthday is actually Sunday, but I was making him his birthday, birthday weekend. I'm okay. taking him to Top Golf tomorrow because it's a day off. I don't know. The message is like, I feel like if you work, if you're signed up for work, you work. I agree with you, but grandma gets a pass. <sighs> Nana's always get. I agree. Passes. Nana gets a pass. Only Nana. Yeah. yeah, that's it. All right, fine. We'll give we'll give Nana a pass on this one. Nanny a pass on this one. It's not even Nanny that gets the pass. It's Hank. I just feel like if you work, if you if you, like when you get older in life, you can't be like, hey, I'm just gonna blow off work and go shopping. Right. It's just yeah. I feel like it's not a good message. No, you sign up to do something, you follow through. Wait. But I signed him up. So. Oh, well, so. <laughs> 
So you should fill in for the well, two hours. So do you think if you want to hear something funny? I almost had to two weeks ago. I almost had to work the six ten a.m. Oh. Hobbamock mini rink or Hobbamock oh. half rink clock because I signed Hank up and he and he couldn't make it. Seventeen bucks an hour. Yeah, seventeen bucks an hour. It's good money. Yeah, it's not bad. It's real good money. Um, so have you ever heard of this sport back in the day called rat baiting? Rat baiting. Never heard of this? No. Okay. So back in like the 1850s, 1860s, there used to be a sport where they would, there'd be like a big pit, okay? And they would let all these rats go in the pit and then they would send a dog or dogs into the rat and whichever dog killed the most rats in the pit won. That's terrible. Rat baiting. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Yeah. They did it in New York. The 1850s. It was like there was like a highbrow sport. It was like like horse racing. The poor dogs. They could have got diseases. I think they were feral. They said the dog was feral. What does that mean? Anybody know what the that means? Dogs feral. Yeah. I don't know what that means. I don't. I don't know either. It means he, wild. He can't have babies. Oh, um, wild. 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 Yeah. It's still wild. That's gnarly, isn't mean. it? Though that's yeah. disgusting. It's very gnarly. There's a yeah, it's word. gnarly. The, is that a word you're supposed to get in this week? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. It's weird to hear you say that word. Gnarly? Yes. Just, you know, it's using it in my regular <laughs> sentence vocabulary over yeah. here. Um, <laughs> all right, so the one thing I want to clear up, and then we can get into our joke segment, and then we'll get into Josh. Um, so I tend to use a period at the end of my, or in my text messages. Like, I text... Grammatically. Grammatically. Correct. And apparently, it comes off harsh, like I'm making a statement. Yes. Someone asked me a question. Is, is that, are you guys having that problem with your texting? No. No. So if I only write one sentence, I don't put a period, but I think if you double click after or do two spaces, it automatically. Okay. So I think one sentence, probably not. But like a one word answer, are you putting the period at the end of it? Like, yes, no. period. No, that's so aggressive. Yeah, that that's is. what I mean. That, so it is. <laughs> that's like setting a thumbs up. Or a thumbs down. Or. Yeah, but there's a or period. A thumbs up. There's Just a, a thumbs period. Up. So that's Come what off aggressive. That's like, what I'm saying. Exclamation that's, point, maybe, but that's what that's what yeah. I'm being told. Coming in today, yes. Or period. coming in today, yes. So the period makes it the yes. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Exactly. Yes. That's how I would read it. Really? Yeah. Start using periods. <laughs> I use them all the time. I got people yelling at me all over the place that you text very aggressively. You're a very aggressive texter. I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> what does that even mean? I'm just texting. I'm just responding to you. Are you coming to the rink? Yes. Period. That's aggressive. Yes. Period. Period. <laughs> <laughs> Exclamation point. Yes. Oh, man. Oh, God. Help me. Bobby Knight. Did we talk about Bobby Knight? We haven't yet. I thought we did. He just died recently. He I think did. we talked about Bobby Knight. No, we didn't. You sure? No. Oh, yeah. I'm sure. Two podcasts ago? No, because he wasn't no. dead. So Bobby Knight has a great, he had a great, so he died. You know who Bobby Knight is? No idea. Oh my God. Really? Yeah. So Bobby Knight was a very famous basketball coach, University of Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> that means you're surprised that I didn't know who that was. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like everybody knows who Bobby Knight is. You know who Bobby oh, Knight is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But he was like a lunatic. Like he threw chairs on the court and yelled and swear and. He very hot on the kids, and at the, towards the end of his career, he went from U in University of Indiana, he went over to Texas Tech, and he put his hands on some kids, right? Like, he really kind of lost his way at the end of his career. He was, he was super aggressive, old school coach, but, like, if you loved him, you loved him, and he won. I think he won three national championships. He won a bunch of, uh, what was he, Big Ten, probably Georgia, back then. Yeah. Uh, so they did a, you know, they had a retirement ceremony for him at one of the games, and so he was on the microphone, and I his quote, his final quote is amazing, and I'm going to try and I hope I don't butcher it, but he says something like, you know, hey, uh, you know, I've said a lot of things over my life. I want to, someone left me with this, and I want to leave it with you. Uh, and it goes, when my time on earth is gone and all my activities are pa here, all my activities here are past, I want to be buried upside down so my critics can kiss my ass. <laughs> 
<laughs> I like that. Don't you like that? You don't like it. I wouldn't say it. No, you like it? It's great. Yeah. Yeah, I think it. So I think it's. I like it. I like it. So, uh, Keith, you got any dad jokes? Uh, I do. I have a couple. Okay. Um, I actually, I have like a five or six from, but I'm just trying to decide which one's going to be the best one to tell. Okay. Um, what kind of bees make milk? <laughs> <laughs> Pass. That's a pass. That is a pass. So I was I was going to say this used to be the, my favorite part of the segment <laughs> until Keithy told his last two jokes with the school bus and the tree, yeah. and I thought I was going to get cut from the episode. So <laughs> this might be another one. <laughs> What's the answer, Keith? Booies. <laughs> Why can't you find a clean dad joke? That was clean. I don't think he wants to. No, oh my clean. Right, god! I'll, I'll get one more. It's a little less. Um, How was that clean? <laughs> what? <laughs> What's the difference between? <laughs> he can't even say it. He can't even get the joke out. <laughs> He's skipping it. If anybody's watching on on the video, he just flipped over his. Uh, cards, so we can't. Right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah. Um, <laughs> what's red? What's red and bad for your teeth? What's red Let's and bad for your teeth? I don't A brick. Know. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, bad. Boy. Yeah. So right, bad. I'll save the other ones for next week. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I, uh, I combined uh, a laxative uh, with al uh, alphabet soup. <laughs> I call it letter rip. <laughs> That's incredible. Oh, man. Did you know that, uh, did you know that Chuck Norris uh, climbed Mount Everest in 15 minutes? Spent the first 14 building a snowman. <laughs> Chuck Norris can have a conversation in sign language, blindfolded. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, I think that's enough for today. On that note. <laughs> yeah. Um, although I have... I don't, uh, did I have, a, um, I think I have one little story left to tell. Well, that, we'll save that to the end. We'll save that to the end. We'll get into Josh, Josh Berman. Big Josh Berman. Berms. Berms. Berms has a nickname? Yep. Berms. Yeah, Berms. Berms. Yeah. Yep. So, but Josh, uh, where, were you where were you born? So, I was born in uh, a small town, northern Vermont, oh. Lind Lindenville. Lindenville? Yeah. But How many schoolhouses in that town? Just one. <laughs> K through 12. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> backstory on that question is I would make fun of Josh incessantly at hockey saying that he had the same teacher, K through 12, because <laughs> he lived in such a small town in I've never even Vermont. heard of that place. Yeah, exactly. Where is it? Northeast Kingdom. So, St. Johnsbury's closest town, about 30 miles from Canadian border and like 15 miles from New Hampshire. Sticks. Yeah. Middle Woods. Of, middle of nowhere. Wow, cool. Yeah. Okay, so, and uh, how did your parents end up up there? So, uh, my mom grew up not too far from there, and my dad grew up in New York City. I uh, got kind of sick of the hustle and bustle and moved to northern Vermont. So. Wow, and met your mom when he moved out there? Correct, yeah. So, he moved out there as a, as, like a, as a young guy? Yeah, after he graduated from Wisconsin, he just didn't want to go back to the city, so. So, he grew up in New York City? Yep, in Queens. What? Really? Yeah, Bayside. Wow. Yeah. Goes to Wisconsin. Then he goes to upstate upstate Vermont. Yeah. Just no, right Derby line. Uh it's probably five minutes from the Canadian border. So just that's just what did you just throw a dot at the board and said I'm going here? Yeah, I think he had a couple friends uh from school there, so that's what brought him up there. And then he met he met your mom. Yep. And uh and uh it's you and your brother? 
Yeah, I actually, and a sister. So I have an older sister, Megan. She's about four years older than me. Um, and then my brother, Travis, is about 18 months older. So it was the five of us. Okay. And and I, I know that I joke about this, but it wasn't a one-room school, correct? No, it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't. So we had a K through eighth and then uh, one high school. So our high school was about probably 500 kids, and it pulled from probably eight to ten towns, small okay. towns around there. So it was like a regional, regional, a regional school. school. Yep, yep. Now, growing up up there, were you playing sports? I did. Played What's, a lot of sports growing yeah, up. You have to, otherwise you die. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot else to do up there. Yeah. Drink and, or play sports. Yeah. Skiing was big, but I was a big hockey player. Was so. there was there a mountain around there? Like, what's the nearest yeah, mountain? Yeah, Burke Mountain. Okay. Pretty close. Jay Peaks, probably 30 minutes. All right. So all the Duxbury people know Jay Peak because they go up there for the hockey tournaments. Yeah. And there's actually a lot of Duxbury people that go to Burke Mountain now. So yeah. There's a Burke Mountain Academy, which is a great ski racing school. Okay. Up north. Is that like the Killington School? Same idea? Same idea, yeah. Got it. So people go up there and from October to, like, March or whatever and... and yeah, well, they go to they. It's a boarding school. So oh, it is similar okay. to going to you know a private school, but you go there to focus on skiing. Wow! And train throughout the year. You go ski in Europe, and um, some of the great skiers have gone to school there. Really? Yeah, Michaela Schifferon. Yeah, is that how you say your name? I think so. Yeah, look it up. <laughs> everyone looking at me. Yeah, because the other producer you're supposed to have that information at your fingertips. Oh, right. Have you ever heard Howard Stern? I was actually called the Howard Stern of the South Shore today. You were? Yeah, by Chris. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so what sport, besides ho- you're playing hockey, obviously. Yeah, played a little baseball, and then I, I played football. So my brother and I were a year apart in school, so for three years we played together. Um, was he a hockey player too? He was. Okay. Yeah. So I played center, or he played center, I played goalie. Um, it's funny, my mom always tells a story, you know, we would, wrestle and fight nonstop at ho- at home then we'd get out on the hockey rink he would score a goal i remember he scored a goal in overtime skated all the way down to the end of the ice gave me a big hug and my mom's like why can't you just act like that at home because <laughs> i hate him at home yeah. i don't know if i knew you played goalie yeah, yeah so how do you get into goalie as a kid it was like early on so the first couple times i went out i'd be you know sprinting around the ice you know can't stand up but just running on my skates and then when the first time they put the pucks out on the ice I just went and stood in the net you know I had my snow pants on kids would shoot I'd be flailing around and you know from probably you know the first five six times I went on the ice I never left the net really yeah so and then I played all growing up uh, until I graduated high school and then uh, when I went to Colby I just I started skating out and I did, did not want to go back in the net. You know, the older you get, you start playing men's league. It's you don't need to be in the net. No, it's no. the worst position it's in the there. world. <laughs> yeah. Um, so as you're coming up, are there any any coaches, any teachers that uh, that you remember? Yeah, uh, definitely my uh, my high school football coach, Coach Sweet, uh, great man. Um, you know, he, he he just his passion for what he did coaching football rubbed off on all the kids yeah and he was just one of those people you you wanted to play for you you wanted to win he was very hard on you but he he really cared about you as a person and um you know i just enjoyed playing with him my brother and i you know we still keep in touch with him you to do this day. yeah so and my my father also worked at the high school so uh they were friends as well but yep. um we still run into him like once a year and it's you know, so do you ever go back to to upstate uh, to northern Vermont, wherever the hell it is? Upstate New York. <laughs> well, it's, it's all the same to me. Upstate do you Vermont. ever go at north of the Massachusetts border? Because it's all the same to me. <laughs> yeah, I do. Uh, my family's, uh, my mom's still up there, but uh, some of my friends from school are still up there. So we uh, we'll take the family up. We go up to Burke uh, usually in the fall. Um, and there's a great lake up there, Willoughby Lake, that we like to go to spend time to. The boys like, you know, swimming up there. So we'll get back like once or twice a year. Nice, nice. So as you're coming up through uh, high school and, and, and everything, you don't play, you don't play, you go to college to play football. Yeah. So tell, tell us a little bit about how that happened. Like how did you, how did you, I mean, because Colby's a great place, great football, right, in the Nepsack. Uh, Neskak. Nepsack is the <laughs> Nepsack is the hockey league that uh, Annabelle plays in. So Neskak. Oh, got it. Um, 
So how, tell, tell a little bit about how that happened. Yeah, so growing up, I was always, you know, I always liked working with my hands, uh, visual learner, and at my high school, they had a uh, boat building program. So uh, for a semester, I learned how to build wooden boats. They were these like cedar ship uh, strip canoes. So I did that for about a year. I uh, didn't really know what I wanted to do after school. I looked at a couple schools, uh, wasn't sure that I wanted to go to college. And my dad being the guidance counselor was like, you know, I don't care if you go to college, but you're not going to stick around here. So you need to go find something to do. So I um, found this school in uh, southern New Hampshire called the Landing School, and it was a boat building school. So I thought for a little bit that I would, you know, build wooden sailboats as, for, a, as a living. Yeah. Yeah. Until I was there for about a month and I was like, all right, <laughs> <laughs> this is cool every once in a while. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, this is not for me. So I picked up the phone. I called my dad and said, hey, look so there's a school called the is it still around? Oh, yeah. The landing school. So they yeah, they build wooden boats. They have a fiberglass uh, boat building program. And then they also have a, a drafting program as well. It's it's pretty well known. So but it's focused on people who are looking for a career change want to get into this field and they kind of give you the the technical side and the training of it and then at the end they have a huge job fair and a lot of these students are getting pulled into you know these companies going to be boat builders correct and so do they go on to like work at a boston whaler or like a parker or like a, a boat like that type boats that we would know or are they building like i got a buddy uh crosby boats Who's been a, his family's been in boat building for 300 years. Yeah. Um, but he's handcrafting these boats. And then now fiberglass boats. If I looked at it, I wouldn't know it was boat built. It was, it was hand built. Like he does like three a year, two or three a year. Yeah. So there's both. I mean, obviously the fiberglass is much quicker. They do have that program now. When I went back 20 years ago, that was not a program. And the challenge with wooden boats is like every piece is manufactured. So it takes long. So you have to find somebody who has a real passion for wooden boats. And the cost is a lot more expensive sure. because the time that goes into it. So, um, yeah, but it wasn't. It, it wasn't it, for you. It, no, it was a good hobby. Um, but I was going to school 7 to 4.30 every day. It was like a full-time job. I'm 19 years old. My brother's at school at University of Arizona calling me saying, this is. Yeah, <laughs> what are you doing yeah, this at is the amazing. landing school this with is that is old guy <laughs> building boats? Yeah. I'm down here in Arizona. It's 85 and nobody has any clothes on. <laughs> exactly. So I was like, all right. I'm like, Dad, I'm, I'm re- I'm, I want to go back to school. He goes, I knew this call was coming. So yeah. started looking at schools, uh, went up and checked out Colby, fell in love with it. Um, so. And I'd played football growing up. I had a year off, but, you know, talked to the coach. And uh, I remember Tom Austin, another guy, great nudge. Um, My mom and I went up, visited the school, sat with him. And just the most charming man, again, somebody who really cared about you. Like, I'd known him, you know, two minutes. And I was like, this guy's amazing. Yeah. My mom said the same thing. We walked out of there, like, after a 20-minute meeting with him. And we're like, all right, this this is where I'm going. Um, so I, after I got done boat school, um, so you did the full year of boat school. I did. Yeah. I you, finished, <laughs> I finished, finished it So this goes back to finish what you start. You signed up, finish it. Yeah. And I was never n- not going to do it. I just, I knew after being there, like this was not something I wanted to do long term. I mean, I love it as a hobby. You know, I hope to kind of continue doing it. I've done a little bit of it on the side, but I now, just wasn't you, the You're building path. boats now? <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh, no, I have. Since Has then. He's seen a boat that was built, though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's I've been, been on a few. I've been on a couple. <laughs> yes, exactly. I've been on a couple. Um, no, but I hope, you know, down the road, I get sure. the chance to kind of pick it up again and do it. Yeah. So it's amazing how different it is to get into Colby now than it. I mean, that story is incredible. Like, I just picked up the phone, went in, walked, saw the coach, and. Said I'm gonna go here. Now it's like you can't get in. Yeah. No, and I had I, I had decent grades, but you know, the standards at those NESCAC school today is are, are so much different. So much different. And, you know, and I think the athletic, you know, obviously I got help, you know, because I played football and, you know, went early decision. Yeah. Um, you know, but I think without having gone early decision, I probably wouldn't have got in school there. And just the amount of applicants they're getting now is, is you know, it's only my class was, I think it's 2,000 students total. So it's just a small school. Yeah. So. Yeah. And it's, um, it's the amount of, like you said, the amount of applicants. I went, just went through it with Annabelle and like, you know, she's applied to schools, 60,000 applicants for 10,000 spots. Like it, you know, you got to really be lucky. Yeah. 
Or you got to be really be good at something, or you got to be be lucky. So when you get to Colby, what position were you playing in football? So I was a safety on on defense. Safety on defense. No hockey at this point. No, they had a club hockey program called the Booze Hounds, which <laughs> of course, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Booze Hounds, you know. <laughs> Which was great. I, I mean, it was awesome. I loved it. Uh, I did that for four years. I ran it for the last two years I was there, but uh, played safety, went there thinking, you know, I was going to start day one. And then I realized, you know, college sports are much different than, you know, your typical high school sports. So, so how did you handle that? I mean, that's a little bit of diversity, right? Yeah, it was tough. I remember the first weekend, uh, my freshman year, I didn't make the travel team. So, you know, there's probably 90 kids on the roster. They take 70 on the road with them. First weekend of school, I'd been there 10 days, and I didn't make the bus. Yeah. I was like, remember that Saturday, everyone I know at school, except for my roommate, is gone. Yeah. You know, at, at the football game. And uh, so that was a real eye-opener for me. And, uh, you know, it just... I, I I made the travel team going forward after that, but yeah. it was a real kind of wake up call. Also, I didn't realize I was supposed to train in the summertime before okay. I went to school. <laughs> <laughs> and there it is, folks. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, "Did you get the training book?" And I was like, "No." <laughs> you know, so I got. They don't the, deliver mail in no. Northern Vermont. <laughs> the mailbox was closed that week. <laughs> the uh, one mailbox in town. Yeah, so that that was uh, that probably had a lot to do with it, but it just you know being in the program, teaching you time management, um, you know, leading into the other summers, kind of knew what you had to do to come back and be ready to play. So, so that made a big difference. It did, it did, and I worked much harder in the summers, and I I kind of figured it out. I knew you know where people were in ahead of me, what great what grade yeah. they were, and when my opportunity was going to be there. So. Yeah, so you were sharp enough to figure it out. You, were, you 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 read the landscape, so to speak. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So each year played a little bit more. Our last couple of years, we had a great team. Uh, when we were seniors, we went seven and one. And you know, I still today, you know, those are some of my closest friends, the guys yeah. that I played with. So, so it sounds like coaches have been a big influence in your life. Yeah, exactly. Which is nice, you know, being a coach. <laughs> All coaches in this room. Yeah, you know, it's nice to take a young whippersnapper and. You know, show them the ropes a little bit. You know what I mean, Rupia? Right. Yeah. Rupia, do you do that? you do any coaching? No. You could, though. Like, spin, that's kind of coaching. Yeah. You know, yes. you're coaching, you know, people to... The athletes. Hold on a second. <laughs> this is a... I have a bone of contention because... Uh, here we go. <laughs> going to the gym, it's not a like an athletic event. No. So why do they call that like the spin studio that I worked for? They um, branded themselves. You had to use certain verbiage. Like what? Athletes. Your riders were athletes. No, they're you're, riders. You're a trainer. You're not an instructor. It's not a class. It's a session. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm okay with the the last two yeah. session versus. I'm okay with that trainer versus whatever the other one was. But athletes. Yeah. Going to the gym is not, doesn't. It was, that was just drilled into my head. Get good at the gym? Like, I'm good at the gym. I don't know. Does that bother you guys? Doesn't bother me, no. <laughs> no. Doesn't <laughs> bother you? Not at all. <laughs> never really thought about no, it. Never, you, you never know, thought about it? First time, actually. It makes them feel good, though. I understand the branding of what they were doing. Like, if somebody comes to take your class, you're like, oh, these are my athletes. And then you're the person that's in your class. They're like, ooh. Yeah, an but athlete? then they, they're like, I'm really not an athlete. <laughs> yeah, look at me. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> or I wouldn't be taking this class. <laughs> right, every day. <laughs> hey, there's some fit people. I'm in sure. Those classes. Yep. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Can they catch a ball? Can they throw a ball? I don't know. I've never thrown my ball. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You need to go take a class and Catching see, and see how well you do. That, hold on. My fitness is, is not, does not go hand in hand with my athleticism. That's what I'm saying. But if you're an athlete, don't you think you would be good at a spin class? Hmm. It depends on my, it's a, that's a fitness test. That's a fitness test. Not necessarily. What am I going to do? I'm going to ride the bike. We're totally off course here. But what am I gonna, I'm, I'm going to pedal on the bike and then what? Stand, what else do I do? You're going to stand do, up. Yeah, you stand up, you sit down. In the saddle, positions. out of the saddle. Yeah. Have you done one? Oh, yeah. Have Love you it. done a spin class? Yeah. They're great. I'm sure they're very, punches, listen. I, you, all. On beat. You have to do it all on B. Yeah, the B part stuff. The BPM, you pick yeah. it up, drop it down. Resistance, pick it up, drop it down. I don't know. Those are all gym things. A lot of moving parts. 
So I have to be smart. Just your legs, really. Yeah, coordinated. Yeah. It's tough. Anyway. <laughs> if you, like, threw a ball at me while I was rowing, and then I threw it back to you, that'd be an athletic move. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. That'd be dangerous, too, though. Not for me, because I'd catch it. Mm. As I rode along. Uh, <laughs> we got to get you in a class. Yeah. I'll go be an athlete in the training session with the trainers. No problemo over here, Miss Thang. Okay. <laughs> no problemo. All right. Um, all right. So you're at Colby. What are you studying? So I was a history major. Okay. That's a waste. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> How's that work out for yeah. you? Yeah. <laughs> I put it right there. Put that diploma next to my sociology degree. Yeah. Uh, education minor. <laughs> oh, yeah. Even better. <laughs> yeah. Go be a history teacher up in yeah, northern Vermont and yeah. make 11 cents. Yeah, yeah. second graders. <laughs> Come on, guys. This K is through 12. George, this is George Washington. <laughs> uh, no, so my thought was, I was like, I'll find a good school to go there. I want to play, I want to play sports. So go to a good school, uh, play athletics, and then kind of figure it out after. So I knew with a Colby degree, um, you know, I, good degree, good school, I could try to figure it out after. So... You know, throughout school, uh, I spent a lot of t summers, you know, work, doing construction, uh, pounding nails. That's what I did growing up. I always knew I wanted to get in construction. Um, so I was more, you know, history was something that interests me. I didn't think it was going to be a career, but, yeah. you know, so that's why I studied it there. I love history, by the way. I, I heard. Yeah, last, big, uh, yeah. huge history guy. Big history guy. Uh, My brother's also a big history guy. Really? Yeah, he loves history. Runs in the family. Huh? Yeah, but he, like, actually reads. I just go on, online, like, on the internet. He, like, reads books and stuff. Wow. He's way smarter than me. Milton Academy, you know, smart kid. Anyway, sorry to interrupt. Uh, no, so I was saying, so when I was at Colby, uh, one of the class, I created an independent study. So there was a construction of a building going on at Colby. And I was like, oh, it's a great opportunity for me to learn, kind of go sit in the construction trailer, uh, try to kind of figure out what's going on. So I went to one of my professors, said, hey, we sponsor kind of an independent study here, get a credit for it. Uh, so I spent a semester watching this building that they were building at Colby, met with uh, kind of the general contractor and tried to learn the ropes a little bit. Because, That's pretty neat. Yeah, it was a good opportunity. It was right there. How about that for a nudge? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it... Um, so I did that, a couple internships uh, when I was at Colby on the kind of general contracting side, you know, and that's what I ended up doing when I got out of school. But you were at that, you were actually doing the work. No. Not no. on the, not on the Colby site, not, but, but when you were doing your construction so, jobs, you were, you were working. Yeah, I did for the, actually for the, each summer that I was, it was more kind of working for a residential carpenter. And then I found a, you know, went on through the Colby network, uh, found a company and in Dorchester, uh, basically said to them, hey, I'll do whatever. I just want to learn the business. And they're like, yeah, great. Come along. So first day I get there, they're like, all right, see that uh, see that pile of rock over there? Move it over to the other side. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, this is not what of, I thought I was I mean, This is a man, bunch of city kids. We'll show this kid. <laughs> yeah. We'll show this yeah. nest cat Colby kid. Yeah. yeah. You want to work for us? So those rocks move over there. <laughs> It's amazing. I love it. I thought I was like going to be work learning kind of the office side <laughs> of it, like so maybe a little bit of estimating, <laughs> you know, sit behind the desk. Uh, so, but it was a good experience uh, throughout the summer. I learned a little bit uh, more. They, you know, I got exposed to some of the office stuff, but did a ton of labor kind of type work. Um, so it was a good summer. And then, you know, uh, I reached out to a few more general contractors. So is this, are you still in school at this point or I have am. you graduated? No, I was a junior in okay. school. You know, honestly, I talked to a few general contractors and they're like, hey, you need to go get some real life experience, try to get an internship. Um, and then we'd be happy to talk to you after the summer. So uh, again, just the Colby network is what I relied on. You know, I think this business that we work in, real estate construction, is all about relationships. Yep. And you know, going to Colby, I knew I had a great network. Um, so I relied on that. And like I said, the company in Dorchester was owned by a Colby guy. And I said, Hey, this is what I'm trying to do. I'm actually trying to get another position for after I graduate, but they want you to get, they want me to get some experience. You know, can you, can you help me with that? 
Um, said I'll work for three free. He ended up, you know, I think I made fifteen dollars an hour. So at this point, <clears throat> did you move in? Did you move to Boston for the summer or something? I did. Yeah, so I, I uh, <laughs> moved into one of the MIT frat houses. Okay, and basically rented a bed for three months. Uh, with like three or four other guys, and I didn't know you any rented of them. one bed with three or four other one, guys. Why did three guys in one bed? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> I don't get it. No, but it was like a triple bunk. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> yeah, no, it was. It was. <laughs> That's coming home after a couple drinks, trying to get to the top of that one. <laughs> How much was rent? <laughs> it wasn't much, but I was I wasn't making much. I, I mean, I was a college kid. I again, I was making probably fifteen bucks an hour. It was it was I, I can't even remember four or five six hundred bucks a month. Um, really, I was just like, Hey, I got to suck it up for this summer. Yeah. Kind of get through it to make sure I can put myself in a position, you know, after I graduate to be in a good, good very, uh, that's a very mature way to look at things. I don't uh, think I was looking at that. Not uh, how I would look at it. No. no, no, but I just add kind of going back. Like I took that year <laughs> off from college, you know? So when I got to college, I was a freshman. I was actually been out of school for a year. I lived on my own for a year. So yeah. I felt like that year alone gave me a different perspective when I went to school. Like a lot of these kids had just left their parents' house, you know, freshmen, right. you know, I just felt younger and, um, you know, I think that was a huge, again, a huge nudge kind of where to where I, you know, ultimately ended up. Yeah, because then you're, at the end, on the back end, you're a year older, maybe a little bit wiser, a little bit more mature. Now, you, do you meet your wife at Colby? I do. Yeah. Wow. Kelsey, yep. She, uh, she went to Colby as well. She played lacrosse. Okay. Uh, so, um, yeah, we actually started dating sophomore year, which is a long, long time ago. Yeah. And wow. And the rest is history. The rest is history. Yes. yes. So, so now you, you take, you do this internship, you go back for your senior year and do you get a job coming out? I do. With so, that company you wanted to get a job with? Correct. Wow. Yeah. So a, a large general, national general contractor, they have a great training program, which was awesome for me. So again, coming from a liberal arts degree, not having the technical side, they basically had a three-year training program. So you're a full-time pro, uh, full-time employee, but they basically train you for three three years. Are they local here in Boston? They are nice. Yeah. yeah. So um, I went to them at the end of the summer. I was like, "Hey, this is what you asked me to do. This is what I did." And they're like, "Great." You know. So I think by November, December of my senior year, I had a full-time job ready to go. Oh, I'm you ready. were locked and loaded. Oh, it was. So oh. that second semester was <laughs> just <laughs> hot. Yeah. Oh, my God. Right? Football was over. Yeah, every like doesn't sec- even matter. Second semester. I think I had, like, two. I put all my classes, so they were Tuesdays and Thursdays. <laughs> so I had, like, I, I think I was only taking three classes, too, at the end. So I had three Yeah, classes. it was, like, basket <laughs> weaving, yeah. underwater yeah. fire prevention. And how to build a boat. Yeah, and how to build a <laughs> boat. Yeah, it was a real heavy lift that year. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but it took a lot of work to get there. Yeah, so. it sounds like it. Yeah. You, you earned that time off, yeah, so exactly. to speak. Yeah, exactly. One of the classes I took, speaking of uh, basket weave, weaving, was uh, African drumming. Yeah. Ooh. So uh, we had Jan plan at Colby, which is kind of like a tri-semester. So just the month of January, you, uh, three out of four years, you have to take a class or you can go abroad. Uh, my freshman year, we took African drumming. Oh, so okay. We used to have class from like five to seven o'clock at night. Just banging on the drum? Learned how to bang on the drum. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, so, did you ever go abroad? Did you take that opportunity? I did. So, my sophomore year, I went to Ecuador, to, really uh, Quito. Uh, lived with a host family there, and uh, took a Spanish class there for the year. So, at, for uh, for, the, for the month. For the month, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah so, you have to take a, a language at Colby. So, I took uh, two semesters of Spanish, and then I did a third in Quito, Ecuador, for uh, for a month. That's an interesting choice. Yeah. Why did you choose there? Uh, well, one to f- fulfill my Spanish credit yeah. and then, um, with, with football, obviously I couldn't go abroad in the fall and, you know, the older I got, the, you know, I wanted to do more training, be a part of the team in the yeah. spring. So there wasn't a great opportunity for me to go away, but the jam plan was a perfect opportunity to do a little traveling. So it sounds like you really took advantage of what Colby had to offer. And I'm, I'm being serious now. I'm, this is, I'm not, it sounds like you really did. Yeah, no, it was phenomenal. I mean, like I would. Kelsey and I talk about we'd love for our kids to go back to school there. I mean, it's the NESCAC, you know, specifically Colby is phenomenal and everything they have. The campus is beautiful. Um, you know, obviously the reputation, the, you know, the community that they have is it's, it's great. And it sounds like a great network too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, and that's actually, so the, the first job I got was another Colby, a Colby. another Colby connection. Yeah. And so how long do you stay at that job? So I was there about seven years. Oh, uh, a, a while then. Yeah. 
Yep, right out of school. I did the three years of training, and then I went right into project management. Um, I built restaurants all across the country, so I traveled around the kind of P.F. Chang's, Cheesecake Factories. You were doing the build-outs. Doing the build-outs, right. So, you know, wherever they were popping up, we, I, you know, they were managed out of Boston. We'd have a traveling person on site, and I'd go to the site, you know, once or twice a month and kind of visit, but run it out of the Boston office. Uh, and are you running these jobs at, the, at some point? I am. Eventually? So that's kind of what happened. Like two years in, I remember somebody left and they're like, hey, here's your job. They, um, you got the tap. Yeah. They're like, here, this is yours. You know, take it and run but with it. But they're only at this point, do, if I'm doing math, like 26, 27 years old. Yeah. Not even that old. 23, huh? 24 years old. And I remember the first day I went to work there, they, they gave me a you know, a set of blueprints and I had never looked at one. <laughs> so I'm like, what do I do with these? <laughs> so I kind of like faked it to get in there, but now I was like, okay, you got to do something here. So, but it was, you know, the training, they were very helpful, kind of picked it up pretty quickly, uh, really enjoyed it. And, you know, it was, it was a good ride. I built a Nobu out in Malibu was the final pro uh, project Whoa. that I built. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. You know, on the Atlantic and you know, the water's coming in under the deck, we poured a deck over the water. It was like a fabulous, Gorgeous. beautiful property. Yeah. 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 So. That's nice. Very so you cool. got to, you were going out to Hawaii every once in a while. Uh, California. Uh, California. <laughs> <I mean. laughs> Same thing. My brain's not working today. Have you noticed that? My brain is not working. Knapsack, yeah. upstate New York. <laughs> no, I don't feel good. Yeah. Gnarly. A little foggy. Yeah, I'm a little foggy. Foggy brain. I do have brain. F and I was not drinking at lunch, so everybody knows, just to be clear. <laughs> For the record. For the record. I didn't even think about that. It never crossed <laughs> my mind. I, he, he looked at me like, <laughs> he gave me that look. Um, so you're at this company for seven years, and then where do you go? Uh, so I went to work. So I wanted to kind of get off from the general contractor and get onto the owner developer side of the real estate world. So I moved and went, uh, worked for a retail owner who owned uh, shopping centers all across and kind of managed the construction in house for there. I was there for a couple of years, uh, worked for a multifamily developer, kind of doing the same thing. Um, went back to the general contracting business for uh, a little bit. And now I work for a real estate uh, investment company in Boston. So, and during this time you get married, you get married. Yep. And, and you eventually move back to Duxbury. Yeah. So we were in, we lived in Boston for probably five, yeah, five or six years, uh, after we got married, had, uh, two kids there and three months after our second kid was born, Kelsey was like, Hey, we got to get out of the city. Gotta get out of the city. We got a two bedroom. She's got a double stroller. She's carrying up a flight of stairs. Yeah. Um, so we moved back. Just to one flight. You weren't like on the penthouse. No, just one. <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, Cause I, I had to go up a couple to get to where I was living. No, we were like <laughs> facing the alley in the back. <laughs> um, not me. I had a roof deck. Oh <laughs> I just use the elevator. <laughs> But I, but I did have a similar experience, and then I just woke up one day, and I'm like, I'm done. I got to get out of the city. I'm done trying to find a place to park my car, you know, because I, I, I was playing, you know, I was either reffing games late at night, or I was playing men's league hockey, and coming home to Charlestown, and you can't find a parking spot. Yeah. No, so. it was, it was, that was tough. I, I walked to work, but every time you left, you know, they had the street sweeping or something. Yeah. My car got stowed yeah. like three different times. <laughs> yeah. I'd walk out. At $500 a pop. Yeah, <laughs> all the way like in Brighton. Yeah. I was like, yeah. how do I get there? <laughs> yeah. No Uber. Just no. <laughs> trying to get a taxi. Miserable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So then we moved to Duxbury with our two kids. We didn't have a house. And uh, what's the connection to Duxbury? So Kelsey, her family, she grew up Grew there. up in, in Duxbury. Yeah. A lot of the, a lot of uh, a lot of people come ho come home, so yeah. to speak. Right down the street from me. Yeah. yeah, which I think says a lot about the town. It right? sure does. That, yeah, that people want to go back there, want to raise kids, families there. I think it says a lot about the town. And yeah, for sure. A re OFD. OFD, baby. I, I am not OFD. Originally, Originally from Duxbury. Oh. I haven't heard that one. Yeah, he's original. <laughs> I am not original, and you are not original, and never will be. Your kids are, though. Yep. Your kids are. Two aren't. Yeah, true. What do you mean? Two are born in the city. Yeah. Yeah, but they're not city kids. Eh. How long were they there? Uh, going to be there 12 years. Yeah, they were there two and three months. Yeah, they didn't even know. No. They're Duxbury. They're from Duxbury. They're not going to be like, I'm from, where, 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 where were you living at the time? In Back Bay. Yeah, yeah. I'm not from the Back Bay. They're not going to be saying that one. 
Like I, I, he says he's from northern Vermont. Can't even say the town because no one would ever know the town. <laughs> it's a, oh, you're what from was, where? So Lindenwood. What's his name? Lindenwood. What it was? Lindenwood. No. No. Linden. Lynn. Lindenville. Lindenville. Northern Kingdom. Yeah. Yes. I've North. never heard. I didn't even know there was a thing called the Northern Kingdom. No. Northeast Kingdom. Northeast, because there isn't. You know why I don't know there's a, uh, something called the Northern Kingdom? Because <laughs> there isn't. Because <laughs> that doesn't exist, idiot. Oh, my God. I'm like, I'm like a sea game today. Jesus. Sorry to all my listeners out there. Feeling a little under the weather. Um, so the Northeast King, uh, Kingdom? Northeast Kingdom. Northeast yeah. Kingdom. Okay. Put that on a list of places I'll never go. They have, they have some cool. <laughs> no, stuff I know, I know, and I, I, I wish one of the trips I wish I had made is a J Peak trip. It's a great yeah. trip. Yeah, I mean it's beautiful. So the fall foliage is awesome. Oh. The skiing in the winter, foliage. Is I know. I, she's a root beer is like, a really big cool fall foliage. Oh yeah, huge yeah. leaf people. They have some really cool places up there though, like different breweries yeah. at like the top of a mountain. Big drinker too. Sunflower yeah. field. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> bike trails. Yeah, her so and bike Johnny trails. Cross. So that's what we've been bringing our kids back to East Burke. Uh, they have a great network of trails there, and you know, it's go it's, mountain biking or whatever. Yeah. yeah, is that like Kirk likes to do that stuff? Loves it. Yeah, yeah. He's got a place up there. That's where he goes is mountain it, biking all the time. Is it yeah. in the Northeast Kingdom? No, it's more in Central Vermont. Okay. Um, so now, what do you have for children? So I got three boys. Trevor, he's eleven. Uh, Parker just turned ten last week, and then I got Lukey, who's seven. Wow, Lukey! Lukey. <laughs> yeah, I love that one. name, Luke. Um, but uh, where are you working now? So I work for a company called Marcus Partners. And you've been there for how long? Uh, going on six and a half years or so. Is it that long? Yeah. So how long ago did we stop playing hockey together? Because I felt like you were working. It must have been right when you moved to town, then. Yeah, it was. So I was working probably at JLL back then. Yeah. So it's probably been. Seven, eight, uh, probably about ten years. Yeah. Yeah. So, how long have you lived in Duxbury? About ten years. You, it's been that long. Yeah. Yeah. You were on Wadsworth. Wadsworth first. For a while. Yeah. Um, and this new company, what? Well, it's not new, but this latest company. What? What? Do, what do they do? So, real estate investment. We focus in a couple different asset class. We're really heavy in industrial today, multifamily, a little bit of life science. Uh, we've kind of stri- sh- shifted out of the office market over the last couple of years. So you, uh, you're you raising the capital on the equity side, buying it with some debt, and then building it? Correct. Is that essentially what yeah, you're doing? Yeah, so we do a little bit of that. We buy some existing assets. Uh, we're a value-add fund, so we're always trying to create value for our investors. So if it's an existing building, whether it's an office building or industrial building, try to kind of fix it up, add amenities, lease it up, and then sell it to somebody who's a core buyer. So it's it's very different than sort of your last two stops, I would say. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the general contracting, it was great good start for me to do that to kind of understand the process now we hire general contractors to do all the work for us um and then the other stuff was a much smaller kind of niche focus whether it was retail or multifamily. we kind of play in all the asset classes now and are you hiring those gcs like are you in on those conversations like this guy um, we want to hire this company they know what they're doing versus this other company yeah exactly and again it's a, a lot of it's relationship driven i mean we're looking for partners because we're investing a ton of money so we want to make sure who we're working with is somebody that we trust so Oftentimes, we're just going to, you know, our, our preferred vendors to... Kind going of back to the guy that did the last one. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And who's delivered before, you know, it's it, it shouldn't always be about the dollars and cents, right? Yeah. Because you get what you pay for. So we're, you know, we're focused on kind of delivering on time, on schedule, um, and just kind of keeping the relationships that we have. Yeah, it's like... But if you can't afford to do it right the first time, how are you going to f- afford to do it the right the second time? Yeah. But you right. got you to learn that, right? right. It's probably going to oh, happen yeah. to you once or twice before you realize that that's the case. Yeah. You go always, yeah. Cause the, and, I, and I'm guilty of it whenever I'm looking at a project. Like, I immediately go to the bottom line. And, and you can't do that because you do that, then you hire the wrong person, and then next thing you know, it costs you double what it's supposed to cost you. Right. And it, and it takes a lot of time to yep. manage people like that. So, yep. we, you know, we're a smaller company. We're about 55 plus people, um, you know, we, we're all doing a lot. So we trust the folks that we're working with and hiring to kind of take some of that off our plate. And how is that market right now? Um, tough. It's, it's challenging. Yeah. You know, the financial world makes it extremely challenging. Um, we've got a lot of projects under construction today that, you know, we got up and out of the ground before um, kind of a lot of the financial 
issues have taken shape, um, but it's slowed. You know, the deal flow has definitely slowed down a little bit, um, but we feel good at the position we're in, and, you know, I think that it will bounce back. I uh, hope so. <laughs> right? We're doing all right here at Crowd Lending. We're doing though. great. We're doing yeah. great, Danny. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about a thing. <laughs> That's the type of employees you want, right? Don't worry about it, boss. We got it. <laughs> then, the, then the shit hits the fanny like, what happened here? <laughs> we were going great. We had a podcast. I <laughs> might pay for my car. Now I got nothing. <laughs> we're podcasting out of the car. <laughs> this is our new office. It's a mobile office. We've gone mobile. Um, yeah. Well, you know, I think it's another great story that we get to listen to here. At, here uh, everybody needs a nudge, you know, kind of a different path, right? Um, using connections. We talk a lot uh, of, about the connections that you make in life, whether it's through a high school that you go to or a college in your case. For me, it was high school and college. Um, but like the connections that you make, you can use later on in life. And they've obviously, there was a, if I had to recap sort of the whole story of, of Josh Berman, I would say Colby had a very, played a very big role in your life. It was probably the biggest nudge when it comes to your personal life, meeting your wife, and then leveraging the relationships or the leveraging their, uh, their network to build the relationship that you sort of have in your business now. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. It's funny. I was, so I was speaking at BC at their real estate group last Friday yeah. and one of the students. They didn't said, call me. BC didn't call me. <laughs> you were next on the list, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I must have turned them down. They must have, my new number is, uh, I'll get you my new number, BC. You must have my old number. Uh, but one of the students said, Hey, what, you know, what can we be doing? What should we be doing? You know, we're trying to find jobs. What, what's the best way to go about it? And I said, Hey, this, it's all about relationships. So I'm like, you know, reach out to folks, have the conversation, go out there and try to connect with as many people as you can. You know, you never know. It's a small world. It's a small business. This real estate world that we work in is very small. So I'm like, just go out, try to make those connections, have coffee with somebody. Yeah. When you get done the conversation, you know, say, hey, is there anybody else I should be talking to here? So it's, again, it's just all about relationships. Yeah, and I think it, it, one of my weaknesses and one of the things that uh, works well is keep having those conversations. Like, just because you had that one cup of coffee, go have that, another cup of coffee with that guy or, or woman six weeks later or eight weeks later just kind of stay uh, stay in fr front of them right and th it's hard to do that's a lot of work yes. because you go and have coffee maybe you don't feel like talking to somebody or you don't feel like meeting with somebody new uh and it, you're not getting anything out of it or you feel like you're not getting anything out of it and then all of a sudden your phone will ring and it'll be that guy be like hey remember we talked about you guys do this and next thing you got to get a deal out of it or something like that but if i had to piggyback your advice i would say keep at it Go have another cup of coffee and another cup of coffee and another cup of coffee, even if it feels like nothing's coming out of it. But I have to ask, when you were up there speaking to college kids, did you feel old? Very. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. It's just, yes. Very young. But the best part about it was we gave a, our presentation, a colleague of mine were there, and not one kid looked at their phone for the entire hour. That's huge. What he didn't know is that they had to leave him outside. <laughs> oh, <laughs> probably. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So. I know because I, I knew someone in there and I was texting him the whole time. <laughs> and he get back to me. <laughs> For that hour. <laughs> I, I thought it was just our stuff was really interesting. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you go with that, you old man. <laughs> They were like, uh, uh, uh. they weren't looking at the other. They weren't looking at their phone because they were all sleeping. <laughs> I wish I had my phone. <laughs> uh, well, thank you for coming on, Josh. Uh, I, you know, it's a, it's always great to hear a great story. I think you got a great story. Um, so um, we'll leave you with my one little um, like message, right? So um, there's a pastor, and this pastor he has a donkey. And he enters the donkey in uh, in some races, and the donkey wins the race. So the newspaper, the next, the, uh, the newspaper headline is "Pastor's Ass Out Front," and the bishop can't deal with it. So he says, "Hey, you got it. You can't race the you can't race the the donkey anymore." So the next day's uh, headline says, "Bishop scratches pastor's ass." Now the bishop's like up in arms, like you can't. You got to get rid of that goddamn. Oh, that goddamn donkey. Get rid of the donkey. So he uh, he sells the donkey to the nun. The headline the next day is, nun has best ass in town. So the the bishop's like losing his mind. He's like, what is going on here? He tells the, he tells the nun to get rid of that 
Get rid of that uh, donkey. Sell the donkey. So the nun sells the donkey, and the headline the next day is, nun sells ass for ten dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so now the now the now the no one wants to buy. No one buys the donkey. She couldn't sell it, so we got to let the, the donkey go. And then the headline the next day is, nun's ass is wild and free. <laughs> so the bishop dies. He has a heart attack. Can't take it anymore. So the moral of the story is. Don't listen to public opinion. Don't worry about what the headline says. So it was a it was a donkey, but he couldn't just couldn't deal with what people thought because of the headlines, and it killed him. So don't worry about what the world thinks. Just go on with your life and ride that ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Donkey, the donkey. What is wrong with you guys? <laughs> Save that one. Pulled that one right out of yeah, the fire. <laughs> <sure did. laughs> Pulled it right out of the fire. See that? That's some profession. Right back on my A game. <laughs> I was operating down here. Boom, right back on the A game. All right, everybody. Josh, thanks for coming on. Thanks, really Josh. great story. Keith, as yeah. always, root beer. Good job. Thank and you. if anybody needs anything, give me a shout because everybody needs a nudge. Thanks. See ya.